You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and I have a guest here with me today to chat about a really interesting topic. So first, I am going to let her introduce herself, and she will let you know where you can find her online. Hi. So it's interesting to introduce yourself. I don't know if I've ever done it before. So my name is Ebony Banks, and um, I am an intuitive, I'm a Claire Tangent intuitive healer. Um, and I guess the best place to find me is my Instagram at intuitive ebony writes or my website, which is ebony, E-B-O-N-I banks.me. Well, that was a great introduction. So you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you did a wonderful job. <laughs> so let's, okay. Let's start at the beginning here where you, first of all, talked about what it is that you do in your version of healing. Um, and I know that we are going to jump into all of the different Claire's <laughs> for yes. the audience who doesn't know. So let's start, <laughs> let's start with yours. And what does that mean? Sure. So Claire tangent means clear touch. And um, it is the ability to receive information from touch. And with me, it doesn't happen casually with casual touch, not at all. It's really when I'm focused and when I'm, you know, in a session with a client and I have that intention and that's when I can get information from them. And I essentially think of it as their body is telling, their body is telling, is talking to me, you know, because I touch various parts of the body from the soles of their feet all the way to the top of their head. That is so interesting. And I feel like <laughs> that is one of the Claire's that's not talked about as much. Yes. Um, yes. So I I love that, that you are able to uh, lend some insight into yeah. that. Because I think people hear about like hearing um, most often like Claire audience and getting information that way. But yeah, the touch mm -hmm. one is is not very common at all. No, I actually think of it as the lesser known Claire. That's what I refer to it as because I didn't even, when I learned I could do this, I didn't know that word I've been doing. I learned this in 2012 about myself and I didn't know the word. So I would say to people, oh, it's like Reiki, but I'm talking. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what to call it. So oh, yes, it is the lesser known Claire. <laughs> so what are, what are these Claire's? How many are there? So um, to my knowledge, there are seven. I'm sure future humans will come up with more. Um, you may read in some places, people will say there are four. There are seven that I know of. And um, do you want me to go over the list of all seven for you? Oh, absolutely. So most people know clairvoyance, you know, because that's what we see in pop culture. Um, and there's Tyler Henry, who's the really popular American clairvoyant that has a television show on E, right? So most people know of clairvoyant and, and well, before I move on, Claire, C-L-A-I-R, it just means clear. And then the ending of the word tells you what way the information is being received. And that's really how I think of all the Claire senses. It's just another way of getting information. So clairvoyance means clear um, seeing, voyance means vision. And that can be, you know, what you're seeing out of your physical eyes. So people who are able to see auras, you know, or other things out of their physical eyes or out of your mind's eye, which we all do in some way. However, some people can't get the information from other, you know, they don't get information the same way. Uh, then there is Claire um, Audient, which you mentioned, which is clear hearing, which is not the kind of hearing that you hear with my voice right now. And then there is Claire um, Olfactance, which is a really weird one, which is um, clear smelling. Um, there's clear gustins, which is clear tasting. I hope I don't have those two backwards. Then there's clear cognizant, which is clear knowing, which is when you just automatically know something. It's like the gut instinct that we have. Every single human being has experienced. Um, then there is clear tangent, which is what is my dominant clear sense. And then there's clear sentient, which is clear feeling, which I think a lot of people who consider themselves empaths are actually clear sentient. They may just not know it and and may not know how to attune to that energy so that they can get more information from what they're feeling. Well, that's so interesting. I like sort of knew all of those concepts existed, but didn't have like yep. the words to explain yes. that. So that's, yes. uh, yeah, I think, I think that's true of so many people too, because, you know, we, I think 
the way I understand it, it's not something specific to me or specific to certain kinds of people. I think every single human being has the capacity to be clear something. It's just, and I think we're all doing it at a very beginner level, you know, like people who can smell when they're near the ocean, but may not know that they're near the ocean or people who can taste when the food is canned, you know, like those are all kind of beginner levels to accessing more information. So um, yeah, it's something that everyone I think can relate to because we're all doing it in some capacity. How did you get started or figure out that you had this ability? Oh goodness, that is such a long story that I've said so many times. So I will, I'm happy to share it here. So I learned this accidentally. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been a spiritual person my whole life. You know, I'm from a, a religious family. So it started there. And then as I got older and learned more, I became spiritual, not religious, and really started to incorporate a lot of my um, African ancestry into my spirituality as well, because um, I'm African-American, generations removed from Africa. However, I do know where I come from, and I and, and that has shown up for me in really powerful ways. Um, so I guess before I learned that I was clear tangent, and the way that my African spirituality was showing up for me was really... Um, so there are there are goddesses and gods in African spirituality called uh, Orishas. And I guess you could think of Orishas in the same way that you might think of like, um, you know, like Aphrodite in Greek, Greek mythology, right? Um, so they're archetypes, essentially, that um, do the same thing that archetypes do in general. These are just specific to at most to West African culture. And I, they literally showed up for me in so many powerful ways. I didn't even know who they were, what they wanted, you know, but like they showed up in my dreams and then I would have to go online and look up the name because I never heard of it before. Or, you know, I would be, um, I was at my favorite Botanica and, um, you know, there were these gorgeous beads that were there and they showed up for me. And I now have a collection of all these Orisha beads representing different um, deities, you know? So it really just showed up that aspect of my life. It showed up that way. But then learning that I was Claire Tangent happened um, years later when I was um, with a Reiki master. And this is a woman whose home I would go to often. She would have all these spiritual gatherings with people and we would talk about all kinds of things. And I really trusted her and I really liked her. So one day I made an appointment to have something done, like my chakras aligned or cleared or something. And she thought I wanted to, she, in her mind, it registered as her attuning me to Reiki, even though I had zero interest in Reiki. So the appointment had been made maybe two weeks before the actual day. And on the day of the appointment, I show up and she's ready to attune me to Reiki. And so because that's what she actually prepared herself to do, I didn't want to disrespect her, you know, because she spent this time getting ready for me in that way. So I just went with the flow and I let her attune me to Reiki and we're in this park outside and she's praying over me and doing all these things. And it's a public park. So there are lots of people there. And the stranger walks over and asks what we were doing. And he asked if I would like to practice on him. And I said, you know, the woman is like, of course, you know, the universe always sends you exactly what you need when you need it, right? So he lays down in the grass and I essentially started doing exactly what she just taught me to do. And I started with the soles of his feet and I started getting information about him, about his wife and his daughter specifically. So I said to the woman, like, can I talk? Because Reiki is a silent practice. There's no talking. And she said, of course. So as I'm jumping around his body, I was getting more and more information about this really traumatic experience he was having. And when I was finished, he said, you're exactly right. How did you know all of that? And I told him, I have no idea because I have never done that until this exact moment. Oh my goodness. Wow. Talk about, yeah, the universe sending you exactly what you needed. Yeah. I, well, but it happened long before him. The universe sent me, I mean, the way I understand things, everything is so beautifully designed um, and things are planned out long before it's actualized. So like me meeting her and having a relationship with her and then scheduling an appointment where I thought it was one thing, she thought it was another. So there were so many things that led to this, you know? And then of course him showing up for me to actually have the experience with him. And that's a beautiful story. And 
brave on his part because I'm not sure that I would do that if I saw somebody like practicing, if I would like go up and be like, Hey, you want to practice with me? I don't think I would do it. <laughs> yeah, he, he absolutely did. And I'll never forget. Like, I, I don't know if I, I don't think I'd recognize him, but I remember this. I remember, I don't usually remember readings, you know, when I I've had so many clients, it's been 12 years, but I remember his reading like to the T because it was my first one. Of course. Oh my gosh. Wow. What a, what a great experience. (laughs) Yes. So it's been, it's been showing up in my life piecemeal for many years. You know, there were lots of other kinds of experiences that were happening. Um, Me getting information about strangers, you know, like just knowing things and not knowing how I knew them and being really distraught about what to do with it. If I should tell them, if I should not tell them, if they would think I was crazy, like all kinds of things were happening over several years before I finally was like, okay, I need to own all of this. How can, what did, what did you do then? Like, how can somebody, you know, you mentioned a lot of people have these abilities. How can Mm -hmm. somebody then like lean into that and learn that and sort of accept that, okay, maybe I am different. Maybe I do have this capability. What were your sort of next steps to really honor yourself? Oh gosh, it's been a lifelong journey, you know, and I still struggle with some aspects of self-acceptance. So I don't know. And for me, because it's shown up so, you know, so, so powerfully for me and so obviously for me, like I just couldn't deny it. And and I don't I know for sure it doesn't show up the same way for everyone. I think we are all as human beings at different levels of spiritual maturity based on past life, present life, a number of variables, you know. So I have no idea why I am at this level of maturity that I am. So I can't say that someone who's at a different level of maturity would be able to have the same experiences. But what I can say is that it is very important to um, be open minded to what is possible you know, and to not limit your belief system about what what this reality is and how we can navigate ourselves throughout this reality. Because I mean, just what we know now is nothing. Future humans will know so much more than what we know, you know? So um, it's really about being open-minded, knowing that you are more than your physical body. You are way more than your brain. And that your brain is not even the most intelligent part of you, you know? And so I think getting over those kind of intellectual barriers are absolutely helpful because then it creates the space for you to allow these other kinds of experiences to happen. Absolutely. I think people, myself included, find it hard to trust their intuition Yes. Uh, you know, especially in the beginning of that journey and just getting started because society tells us not to. Absolutely. It tells us that what, whatever we're experiencing is weird and not normal. And you shouldn't <laughs> hear voices and you shouldn't be getting somebody's life story just by <laughs> society tells you that you might be crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And and you know, I mean, for some people. Some people that are having those experiences, they're not coming from a loving place. And so, you know, I would not quantify it or as, or yeah, as intuition, because the way I understand intuition is um, it's loving, you know, it would not tell you to harm yourself, to harm someone else. So some people that are having those experiences that are telling them to do those things, I don't know what, what that is and where that's coming from, but it is not what I experience, you know? So um, there is a bit of a fine line there. (laughs) There is. And, and I do, I do agree that it's more, it's more about that self-love that comes through when you're really in tune with your intuition. Yes. Yes. And, and it's, it's the universe, it's universal love really, because it's, you know, we're spiritual beings first. And so it's the part of us that existed before we had our bodies. You know, it's the more intelligent part of us that we can access to support us with our physical reality. Um, and so I think of that part of us as being, uh, just divine and loving. How can somebody sort of access their intuition and grow in this area to 
you know, as, as, a, as a route to that, like greater self-love that, just, yes. you know, the exact opposite of what society is telling them to do. Yes. Yes. And you know, it's really practical ways. So, um, people are usually surprised by my answer because they think there's, you know, there's something you have to do, like some ritual, some prayer you can't, you know, but really it's just how you're showing up for yourself in your 3d life. And it's really about being, um, honest with yourself about what you want and, be, and, and about how you feel because intuition is so genius that it will guide you based on those things and based on what is true and authentic to you. So if you're telling yourself, for example, that you're happy at a job that you're not happy in, you won't ever be able to, well, well not, I can't say you won't ever, but it will be more difficult for you to manifest a happier job because you're not even telling yourself the truth about the job that you have that you're unhappy in, you know? So right. it's it's really about really practical real life things and how you are managing your own relationship with you. Because the more you line up with your truths, no matter what those truths are and and being mindful not to judge them. If you know what you're wanting or desiring is something that people in your life or or the world d- disagrees with, right? Trust it. <laughs> Trust it anyway because it it's leading you somewhere. It it may not be the final destination. It may be, you know, you're en route to something else and you have to go there first, right? So it's really about like really owning your truth and trusting what makes you feel good, what what makes you happy and what is true for you and and um and going from there because that energetically just creates um a space for you to receive more and to be guided more. Yeah, that makes so much sense. That's always something that I talk about on the podcast is sort of doing that mundane work rather yes. than, you know, just like, oh yeah, there's a spell for everything, but <laughs> right. you, you got to figure out like the why behind the spell. Otherwise it's not going to manifest exactly how you want. You have to look at your life and figure out like, okay, why do I want money? I can't just do a spell to to get money. What What's the problem? Like, why do I not have it? Why do I need it? What's the, you know, like you said, an unhappiness with a job. Do I need a better job? Like why? And it's really yes. getting to the root of all of those issues, which is not necessarily something magical. That's really some like mundane work that needs to happen there. Yes. Yes. And you know, words are spells. You know, what we're thinking, what we're saying, they essentially are spells because they're so powerful because they they resonate with vibration and frequency and they and they connect us to certain vibrations and frequencies, you know? And so what you're saying out of your mouth um is is very powerful, you know. Absolutely. And I, I like that idea as words, you know, being spells. I was always a writer for many years. That was where my nice. time slide. So I like, I really enjoy that aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, many of us have an awareness of how powerful words are, which is why like people lie <laughs> you know, <laughs> because, because we know, we know. So it's just like thinking about it in a different way. So how is it that you are able, I mean, I have a a general understanding, but from your experience, how is it that you are able to heal people with your particular gift? How does that come across in your practice? Oh goodness. So many things happen in the session with me. So, um, with my, with my clear tangent readings, uh, I typically, so I have a strong relationship with subconsciousness and this is something I know about myself, you know, this is why my name is Ebony. It's my birth name, like the dark, all that is like, I resonate with all that. And for me, you know, dark is just the unknown. I don't think of it as evil, bad. It's just the unknown and it's subconsciousness. It's feminine energy. All those things go together. And, um, so, um, I forgot your question though. (laughs) I forgot where I was going. (laughs) No, of how do, what happens in a session how oh in a session how do I, yes. <laughs> so in my sessions I typically am in connecting with like people's subconscious um self you know and and oh so many things come up it can be you know things happening today that day you know something that happened 25 years ago it depends on what is I pick up on the energy that is resonating in the person's body that is ready to be transformed and so it could be, it, who knows what that could be. It could be um, absolutely anything. And and in my sessions, I'm also channeling divine energy. And so there's, I'm moving a lot of energy around. And I'm also really pretty um, 
obviously connecting like dots for them that they would not have connected on their own, you know? And so they're getting a lot of information about why they are behaving a certain way, why they are in pain for certain things and how to come into harmony with those things so that it doesn't, it doesn't hurt them. Oh, that's so interesting. Is there anything, I imagine that at the end of the day, it's kind of a heavy practice and that leaves a lot yes. of energy in your space and with you. Is there yes. anything that you do regularly to take care of yourself? <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I generally, you know, when I was in the early years of doing this, I used to get really hungry after the sessions and I didn't understand what that was about. And, you know, it's because of all the energy that I was moving around and all of that. But nowadays I don't get hungry anymore. Um, you know, I can, I, it's very, it doesn't even, it doesn't take as much from me as I think it used to because I've learned how to manage it better. And I meditate pretty much every day. And um, I'm generally like a pretty high vibe person, like just on an average day, you know? So um, I mean, I, I'm happy. I'm a happy person, you know, and I feel good off most of the time. And so I think those things contribute because, um, you know, I definitely don't take on other people's energy. And when a session is over, it is over. You know, I don't, I don't connect with them at all anymore afterwards. There are certain people in my life who like I, I um, will be able to connect with without having a session, but um, that is extremely rare. And um, yeah, I just, I just, once the session is over, it's, I don't like light a candle or do anything. I say an opening prayer and a closing prayer, non-denominational prayers. And, and that's that. Do you have any tips uh, for people who pick that up? Like at the beginning, you mentioned that some people who uh, consider themselves empaths yeah. uh, might be clairsentient. It, do you have yeah. any tips for, for cutting that off? Because I think that's something that I get asked a lot is like, I pick up the vibes of other people and I don't want them. How can I stop that? Yes, I definitely have a tip. So I used to do the same thing years ago. I used to be, um, before I even knew I was Claire Tangent, like years, years ago, I used to, uh, I could cry if I felt someone else's energy or just feel overwhelmed and like just take it on that way and not even intentionally. And so what I learned is the key is to really focus on your heart chakra because it's so important. And for those listeners who don't know what that is, it's just the space at the very center of your chest and it's associated with the color green and chakra is a Sanskrit word. Um, and um, I think popularized mostly in Indian culture, but that, that energy center and the center of your heart will really support you in not picking up things that you, that are not in your energetic integrity, you know? So you won't cry when you feel that someone else is sad because oftentimes um, we pick up energy from our solar plexus, which is another chakra that is um, just the gut basically. And that is why, why so many people are feeling what other people are feeling. So just focus on the heart and you really just do that, your, your heart chakra, not your physical heart. And you really just do that by thinking about it. Like just, just think about that. Just put your attention and your awareness in that space and that connects you to that energy. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a great idea. Great tip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, because there's so many empaths out there and um, yeah. And I know half of them are clear sentient and, and I also can share with them that um, if they are, if, if your listeners are people who are picking up energy from other people, go a little deeper, right? Like don't stop because it makes you uncomfortable. Um, see if you can get information, like ask yourself, what is attempting to be communicated to me in this moment? Because that's literally all that's happening. You're receiving that you're, you're so highly sensitive that you're receiving an awareness that there's information for you to access. And that awareness is, is showing up as whatever emotion or feeling that you're having. So if you can stick with it, go a little bit further by asking yourself that question, then you'll start to recognize all the ways that your body is communicating with you because, you know, um, our bodies tell us, give us a lot of information about what's happening in our environment and, or maybe not even in our environment, right? Just whatever we're, we're connecting with. So, you know, if your shoulders are raised or your toes and your shoes are clenched 
or your fists are clenched, like that's an indication that you're experiencing something that's unpleasant, some sort of stress. But when the opposite is happening, that's an indication that you're really relaxed and you're open and receptive. And that's ideally how we all want to be walking around in the world. But of course we don't for various reasons. Um, so pay attention to how your body is responding once you start to feel the feeling, you know, and, and see what else, what other cues your body is giving you about what you're feeling. Did that make sense? It did. It it comes back around <laughs> to that idea of the intuition, you know, helping you sort of be more authentic and honor yes. those true feelings. Yes. Yes. And then, and remind yourself that you're safe too, you know, because it can be so uncomfortable that um, we feel unsafe. Right. And also remind yourself that it's not yours and, and, and do your best to stay in your energetic integrity so that by focusing on your heart chakra, so that you're, you don't end up in tears or you don't get angry or whatever the emotion is that you're picking up from someone else. You just want to stay in your own emotions. Yeah. I think that, uncomfortable feeling is, is a lot of what the issue is, is people do not want to feel uncomfortable. They don't like it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be learned there. Yeah. There is so much to be learned. And, and I really want people to think differently about it because the uncomfortable feeling is just a cue. It's just a cue that's showing up as discomfort, you know, and, and it's just a cue that's telling you there's more for you. There's more information for you to receive. That's a great way of looking at things and <laughs> great yeah. method of sort of rephrasing that and reframing it to something. Yeah. Else. Yeah. <laughs> it's important because you don't want it because what happens is you get uncomfortable, then you shut it off and you won't ever be able to get to like the clear senses, right. To get the actual information that is trying to be communicated to you. And the fact that, you know, that feeling is coming up is because you're receptive to it, you know? And so um, it's a gift and it's a blessing and it's really not, it, it's really, we just have to, we just have to learn how to manage it, but we don't want it to go away, you know? Right. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any other practices? I know you mentioned your meditation. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that you do regularly in your daily or weekly life? I give myself Reiki, you know, because there's so many lovely Reiki practitioners across the planet. I don't practice Reiki anymore. And I also don't think I can just you know, be with someone and not tell them what I, what is coming up. <laughs> it would be really hard for me to not speak. <laughs> but um, so I give myself Reiki, you know, uh, when I feel the need, I'll give myself Reiki from, you know, my, my womb area to the top of my head. And what else do I do? I mean, I'm constantly burning candles. I just have a thing with them. Um, I also um, listen to like high frequency you know, beats a lot of the time. I love those um, like binaural beats, I believe is what they're called. I'll listen to those a lot and there are millions of free ones on YouTube. Um, what else do I do? I'm mostly vegan and, you know, I think my diet in general helps me because the way I understand things, eating in general, even if you're vegan, it uh, grounds you to the earth. You know, the, the whole process of digestion grounds you to the earth. And so, one way to kind of be more susceptible and more open energetically and spiritually is to be vegan, right? To, because meat and dairy are not helpful in that way. Um, and it also, um, it also nourishes you in a different way because you're getting all of this energy from plants, you know? And so it's really helpful in that way too. So maybe my diet plays a bit of a role and I've been vegan long before it was popular. Um, Oh, I love that. I am a vegetarian, but I cannot quit cheese. I don't know how you do it. I guess this, I, I, understand. Want, I want to be vegan, but the cheese, <laughs> man, it gets me every time. No, I understand. I mean, I was, well, I should say I was strictly vegan for about 15 years and then I was deficient. I was, I was um, iron deficient and I didn't know it, but my, my hair started thinning and my nails started breaking. And I usually have like claws, you know, and I didn't know what on earth was going on. So the doctor told me I had been iron deficient for a while and it was so bad that they wanted me to have a blood transfusion on the spot. Wow, That's how deficient I was. And so I started eating meat. I, I told them I didn't want a blood transfusion, but I started eating meat. And so, and I really enjoyed it. So I know what you mean about cheese and meat. Like I actually like those things. It's, I only don't eat them because I know how my body responds, but they're yummy. <laughs> yeah. 
I I've actually never had meat in my life. So I don't know. Nice. Um, yeah, I've always been a vegetarian, but the cheese, my body reacts terribly to cheese, but I eat it anyway. Like, your, yeah, <laughs> I cheese can't is quit. a thing. Oh, especially like fresh mozzarella pizza. Mm. Uh, oh yes. my goodness. Pizza's my downfall. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> but I completely agree with the sentiment of being more attached to the earth in that way and the energy mm-hmm. from the plants and being more mindful of just like what you eat in general, even if that does include meat and dairy, uh, that is just being mindful of what you're putting into your body is a great way to sort of connect as well. But, you know, I think now that I think about it a little more, there are a lot of like, again, some practical things that I do that, you know, are probably so natural to me. I'm just, I hadn't thought about them as serving me in the way that you're referencing, but they do because I, um, like just in how I manage my relationships and my work life, like I don't stress myself out, you know, um, I, I manage things in a way so that, um, yeah, so that it's not stressful and when, whatever way that looks like for me. So I tend to be a planner and I like to get ahead and, you know, um, I'm also, I, I have uncomfortable conversations with people when I need to, you know, I'm that person, you know? So, so I think all of those things are also helpful because it minimizes the amount of stress that I have. And I also make sure I I sleep well and I get good sleep, which is probably um, up there in terms of like high ranking thing that is good for me. Yes. I I love it. And I love all of those answers because they are very small things that Mm -hmm. don't seem like they have any sort of spiritual or witchy background, but they are are sort of the basis of then what leads you to be better in like your day-to-day life and is more helpful and then allows you to do like more tool things like doing Reiki on yourself. You yes. wouldn't be able to accomplish those things if you weren't eating correctly and sleeping well and managing your stress levels. They exactly. might be mundane, but they're so important. Yes, absolutely. You know, how we manage our day-to-day life is more important than we know. You know, if you're someone who gets up tired every morning and you're grumpy and you're not eating well, and then, you know, you your relationships are a bit messy, right? And then you don't sleep well, like none of that is helping you get to your spiritual self. You know, like all of that really has to be managed well before you can get to the other things. I know there's a saying, oh, how does, what is this saying? Something about um, like as humans, we have to take care of our basic needs, you know, like um, food, water, housing, you know, those kinds of things before we can think about like relationship and like other parts of our lives. And so I kind of think about it like that, you know, accessing your spiritual self is really, there There are tons of witchy things you can do once you get there, but to get there so that you can really reap the full benefits of all the witchy kind of things. It's really about like how you're managing the non-witchy things, <laughs> you know? Yes, absolutely. That's exactly how I feel that they really all build off of each other. And I know that I'm not able to do things if I did not. I need eight hours, like eight uninterrupted hours, which is why like one of the reasons that I know that I can never have kids because I need my kids to just do it selfish. (laughs) I am selfish, but it's one of those things that if I don't get like my proper sleep, I can't do any sort of witchy things the next day. I'm like, nope, I am in a bad mood. I just, anything is not going to work well today. I already know. Yes, absolutely. I'm the same way. And for people who are highly sensitive, which it sounds like you are and much of your audience is, it's even more important. These things are even more important because the sensitivity, you know, can make, you know, us irritable easily, more easily than someone else because we have an awareness that is greater than someone else's awareness, you know? Or like it can show up in so many ways. And so it's really important for sensitive people, especially to take good care of themselves in all the practical ways. Yes. <laughs> uh, I know there's so many listeners that needed to hear that. So thank you. Yay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that came up. Well, I want to thank you for your time and sharing your expertise and chatting about all of this. I learned a lot. I did not know. I, like I said, I had like the general idea that all those clears existed, but not the name <laughs> of them. So that was fun. Nice. Well, thank you for having me. I mean, I hope it was some new information for your audience and it's stuff that they can, you know, learn and grow from. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. And listeners, I'm going to have everything linked so you can check out more information. And if you feel called that maybe you have one of these Claire gifts, do let me know. I would love to know what the audience feels. And if they feel like maybe one of them is calling out to them, do let me know in the comments. 
And that's everything that I have for this week. I will see you all next week. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.